Good evening, everyone. We are live on Facebook. Amen. Uh, we are live. And so we just bless the Lord. It is seven o'clock on the nose. Look at God. Was able to get the technology running. Amen. And so we just thank God um, that you are here with us. Um, I want to make sure um, Pastor Monique and Pastor Hudson, if you can share on your respective pages so that uh, everybody know that we are here. And we are live and online. Amen. Let's just, I just want to double check. Can y'all check for me and make sure that you can see that we are live? I think it says live now. Um, but I just want to check, um, make sure that, that everyone can see us. If somebody can text me and say, I see you, then I'll be all right. Amen. I think I'm going to click on the little button and um, I'm having problems with my little button working. <laughs> so, there we are. Yes, it's working. I can make myself hush. Amen. So greetings, everyone. I just thank God for you. Please share and let everyone know that we are here and live. I am Reverend Dr. Kimberly McManus, the pastor of St. John AME Church in Pocomoke City, Maryland. Again, y'all, welcome to our Friday Pentecost service. And we are so excited today to usher in the Holy Spirit. And for those of you who have been with me since I've been pastor, this is my third year, y'all. Um, this is So this is the third anniversary of the Friday Pentecost service that I host. And I bless the Lord that for all three of the services, uh, Reverend Monique Upshur Davis has been right here with me. So I just bless the Lord for her. She's been right here ushering in the Holy Spirit. And so tonight, we are just super excited to have, have with us Reverend Michael Hudson, pastor of Gethsemane Amy Church in Baltimore, Maryland, um, to usher in the Holy Spirit as he intercedes on our behalf. And then Reverend Monique Upshur Davis, pastor of Mount Olive Amy Church in Wharton, Maryland, will bring forth the word like she always does. And so, um, so that's my little greeting to you, amen. But before we begin, I would just like to begin with why we actually celebrate Pentecost. I know, um, you know, we like to always say this is the, the one holiday, if you will, that the commercialism hasn't taken, amen. And so we say, like, you probably heard a lot of you, if you uh, haven't been in church that long, it's all right, it's all good. We thank God for you, amen. But we say, what is Pentecost? And so um, you can find all online and, and, and get the information that you need. But according to what's in the Bible, and I just wanted to pull this for you, the origins of Pentecost include the historical and biblical origins of what we know as Pentecost today can be found in Exodus 23, 14 through 19. Leviticus 23, 15 through 16, and Deuteronomy 16, 10. One of three significant Jewish festivals. Remember, y'all, um, the Old Testament reveals um, Jesus. So Jesus is the Old Testament prophesied, right? And then Jesus fulfilled it. It revealed Jesus fulfilled, okay? And so um, in the Old Testament, you'll read about the three significant Jewish festivals. And Pentecost is the Greek name for the festival of weeks a prominent feast in the Jewish calendar that celebrated God giving them the Ten Commandments, 50 feasts in the Jewish calendar that celebrated, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just ahead of myself, but the prominent feast in the Jewish calendar that celebrated God giving them the, the Ten Commandments 50 days after the exodus from Egypt. Um, God instructed his people to celebrate the Festival of Weeks, which is W-E-E-K-S, which was to be held seven full weeks, 49 days, plus one day after Passover, equaling 50 days. Also called the Feast of Harvest, this was when the Jews would present offerings of the first fruits of their spring crops. Jewish law required all adult Jewish men to come to Jerusalem from wherever they were living to personally be in attendance for the celebration. And so this is the context moving to the New Testament in which Acts 2 begins, saying, when the day of Pentecost came, um, there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, I said it right, Pamphylia, Egypt, Libya, and Rome, Cretans, and Arabs. You can find it in Acts 2, 1. 5 and also 9 through 11. When the Holy Spirit arrived on the day of Pentecost, it was to symbolize that it was the new first fruit of God's spiritual harvest to come, the second coming of Jesus and redemption of his church. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Amen. 
In Acts chapters 1 through 2, we learn that about 120 followers of Jesus were gathered in prayer in an upper room of Jerusalem, having recently seen Jesus depart and return to his Father in heaven. While the believers were gathered, the Holy Spirit came upon them with flames of fire and violent wind. Why such dramatic signs of power? Precisely because the Spirit was empowering the church for the mission Jesus had given them in Acts 1.8, which was to be his witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. That includes us too, y'all. And so Jesus had known that his followers could only fulfill this mission with the help and power of the Holy Spirit. So he had instructed them to wait in Jerusalem until they were given the Spirit. Luke 24, 49. Just as the Spirit had empowered Jesus for ministry, Luke 4, 1, so the Spirit would now empower Jesus' people for ministry. At Pentecost, the church was not only empowered, but also expanded to all nations and to all groups of people. In the Old Testament, God's work had mostly centered in one ethnic group, the people of Israel. But at Pentecost, somebody need to say Pentecost, amen? God expanded his kingdom to all nations. The Spirit demonstrated this by enabling the believers to speak in foreign languages they had never known so they could share the gospel with people from every nation under heaven, Acts 2, 6. Peter told the crowds in Jerusalem that the Spirit was being poured out on all people so that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's Acts 2.21. And so we like to say there's some um, services that you can find. There's some litanies that you can find that adapt Psalm 104 and Acts 2. And it simply reads, praise the Lord from whom all blessings flow. The day of Pentecost has come. And we have gathered together in this place. We are nothing without you, Lord. Send forth your presence and grant us your mercies and love. Creator God, rain down your spirit that we too may prophesy. Praise the Lord who sends forth this spirit. Praise the Lord who renews the face of the earth. Jesus Christ, rain down your spirit that we too may see visions. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Everlasting Father, rain down your spirit that we too may dream dreams. Praise the Lord. Praise the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, y'all, I hope that that little bit gives you just a little taste of what Pentecost really is. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I am so excited. Then not only did we get a chance to see a uh, uh, resurrection Sunday, we 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 worship and we prayed all through Holy Week, and then we had a resurrection Sunday. But this we celebrate today as Pentecost Friday because Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, Amen. And so, I Amen, Amen. I don't know about you, but that that's just that's just one of my favorite songs. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, Amen. Let the Holy Spirit know that indeed he is welcome. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit say, Holy Spirit, you are so welcome here. And so we just bless the Lord. That's just, that's just one of my favorites. Amen. And I thank God uh, for the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so before we move further into the service, I just want to tell you it's offering time. Y'all like, oh, <laughs> yeah, but it's offering time. Amen. We ask just, just briefly that you support St. John AME Pocomoke City. Amen. Uh, with your tithes and your respective offering. Um, I have the information here. If you just click on the information above my head, I promise it's in all of that little writing. Um, if you just click on that information and please show your support of the church. Amen. You can do so in three ways with PayPal at St. John A-M-E Pocomoke. That's P-O-C-O-M-O-K-E 21 at gmail.com. You could also do so with Cash App at dollar sign. That's S-T, John, J-O-H-N-A-M-E, Pocomoke, P-O-C-O-M-O-K-E, 21. Or you can mail um, tithes and offering directly to the church at St. John A.M.E. Church. That's 622 Cedar Street. That's C-E-D-A-R Street, Pocomoke, P-O-C-O-M-O-K-E, City, Maryland, 21851. Amen. Uh, we thank you for being a cheerful giver. And um, please know that God sees your faithfulness, amen, when you give unto his house, please know he's going to bless your house, amen, 
So we thank God for those of you who have a heart to give and those of you who want to give but can't give right now. Um, just know that God still sees your faithfulness, that having a heart to give, um, he still honors. I'm here to tell you, there's been times in my life, and I'm sure that Reverend Hudson and Reverend Monique can say the same thing and attest to all of us can, um, that there have been times in our lives where we didn't have something to give, but God knew our hearts. You can give of your talents and your gifts, amen, but God will so bless you so that you can give stuff away. I I'm here to tell you, just learn how to trust God. Trust God with your little bit and he will multiply it. I mean, I'm telling you, just have the faith of a mustard seed, and he will multiply it. I'm here to tell you. So may God bless you for being a cheerful giver. Know that God sees your faithfulness. Amen. And so next, we will bring to the platform Reverend Michael Hudson. Amen. Um, and so Reverend Michael Hudson was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland. He's the youngest of three children of Garfield and Ruth Hudson. He was educated in the Baltimore City Public School System. He graduated from Carver Vocational Technical High School in 1986. In November 86, he joined the United States Army and retired in November 2006, serving 20 years and 10 days. Reverend Hudson also has attained a Bachelor of Science degree in Management Information Systems from Liberty University. And just, uh, I don't know, about a week or so ago, he also graduated with his master's degree. Um, um, and I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure which, which area, but anyway, it was in seminary. He graduated with his master's degree from St. Mary's Ecumenical Institute in Baltimore. Amen. Baltimore, Maryland. Um, in February 99, Reverend Michael Hudson was stationed at Fort Drum, New York. While serving there, he joined Deliverance Temple Apostolic Church under Elder Marvin L. Elmore. Reverend Hudson was ordained as a minister in the Way of Holiness Church of the Apostolic Faith by the founder and presiding bishop, Bishop Christine McGee. While at Deliverance Temple, Reverend Hudson served as an associate minister, adult Sunday school teacher, a member of the praise team, and the director of the youth choir. In June 2002, Reverend Hudson relocated to Fort Meade, Maryland. While serving there, he joined Gethsemane Amy Church under the leadership of the church's founder, Reverend Raymond F. L. Edmonds, Jr., where he served as an associate minister, adult Sunday school teacher, the praise team leader, and the church equipment technician. Reverend Hudson was ordained as an itinerant deacon at the 197th Baltimore Annual Conference of the AME Church. Reverend Hudson was assigned and appointed as the pastor of Gethsemane by Bishop William Phillips DeVoe, Jr., the presiding prelate of the 2nd Episcopal District of the AME Church, of the AME Church on the 31st of October, 2015. He is committed to kingdom building and he loves the Lord with his whole heart. One of his favorite passages is Psalm 133.1. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Reverend Hudson is married to the lovely Sherry Bell Hudson and they are the proud parents of a daughter, Micaiah, and two sons, Michael II and Malik. Amen. And so we ask right now, that Pastor Hudson will come forth, allow the Holy Spirit to use him as we usher in Pentecost. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that dwells within me. Uh, first, we want to say we thank the Lord, amen, for Dr. Kim, amen, McManus, uh, for allowing us to have this um, Friday night fresh wind and fresh fire Pentecost service. We praise God for you, my sister, and we praise God for my big sister, Reverend uh, Monique Upshaw Davis, who I know, yes, y'all get ready for the word, amen. And so, but it is my duty today um, to usher in the spirit of God by way of prayer. And so I would ask that all, I would just bow your heads um, and just reflect on the goodness of God allow his presence to enter wherever you might be, whether you're in your bedroom, your living room, it does not matter, um, but just open up yourself um, to allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to flow freely where you are. And so let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you in that most precious name of Jesus the Christ. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be here uh, celebrating uh, Pentecost on a Friday night. We thank you, God. One, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you uh, for the sacrificial lamb of the world. 
We thank you, God, that he got up with all power in his hands. We thank you that he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. We thank you, God, uh, that he thought it not robbery to send the gift of the Holy Spirit down to us uh, who would not be where we are right now if we had not had the Spirit of God residing in us. God, we come first. We say thank you. Thank you uh, for all that you've already done. Thank you uh, for the beacon of light that you've given us. Thank you uh, for the angel uh, of the church, St. John, and me, and Pocomo. We thank you uh, for the vision that you've given her to even have this um, service. We thank you uh, for Reverend Monique Upshaw Davis, God, uh, who's going to bring forth your word on today. We thank you for all who are uh, watching and viewing on these social media platforms. We thank you, God, for uh, just to behold the beauty of another day. God, we ask now, one, that you would forgive us from every sin that we may have committed by word, thought, and or deed. We pray that you would wash us until we be whiter than snow in your eyes without a spot, wrinkle, or blemish. God, we celebrate fresh wind and we celebrate fresh fire. Over 2,000 years ago, God, you sent the gift of the Holy Spirit down to mortal men that we would be empowered to conquer anything that the world decides to throw at us we thank you uh, for the fresh wind and we thank you for the fresh fire we thank you uh, for the spirit of god for the spirit of god god you you declare in the word to timothy that you have not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power of love and a sound mind. We thank you, God, for the spirit that leads us and that guides us. We thank you uh, for the spirit, God, that comforts us, God, that uplifts us when we're down. We thank you, hallelujah, for your spirit, God, because when you sent your spirit, you sent your presence here to be with us. And we thank you, God, for not leaving us alone, but we thank you, God, that your spirit resides inside of us we thank you god that your spirit has uh, started a change in us from the inside out what a wonderful change uh, because of your spirit god and god we pray uh, that everyone who's viewing this service right now that they would feel your presence that they would feel the fresh wind that they would feel the fresh fire of the holy ghost God, that change would begin to come, God. We pray, God, that the atmosphere would even begin to change. We pray, God, uh, God, that you would use them in a special way, God, because you, in fact, have called each and every one of us, everyone that's watching this social media stream. You've called us, God, to a higher calling. You've called us uh, to, to be a peculiar people, God, in the name of Jesus, not to be copycats, God, but You've called us individually to be who it is that you have called us to be. And we pray, God, uh, by the movement of the Holy Spirit within each and every one of us, that we would do what you have called us to do, that we would complete the assignment, God, that you have for us to complete. We thank you even now, God, for uh, the churches, God, the bodies, uh, God, that you have placed us in. We thank you for all of our members. We thank you, God. Because you are teaching us, you are instructing us, you are leading us, you are guiding us. God, you're shaping us, you're making us, you're molding us. Hallelujah. And to the church that you have called us to be, we thank you, God, that we're not doing things that we used to do on yesterday. But we thank you for shifting us into a new movement, into a new way, God. We thank you for getting us out of our comfort zones. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We thank you for getting us out of our comfort zones, God, and pushing us into the unknown, God. You've pushed us, God, hallelujah, out of our comfort zones. And now, God, we are relying more and more on your Holy Spirit. Now, lead us and guide us in the name of Jesus. Sit on us, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Sit on us until we be empowered 
to do what it is that you have called us to do. And we declare that there is no demon, no devil in hell that will prevent us, God, from reaching the great goals that you have for us to reach. We thank you in advance, God, for what it is to come in these next few days. We thank you for the souls that are going to be saved. We thank you for the lives that are going to be changed, even on today. And we pray, God, that you would breathe a fresh anointing over Reverend Monique, God, as she begins to speak your word. Use her, God, in the name of Jesus. Use her, God, that she would speak a word that not only sounds good, but does good to everyone who hears. Now open our ears to receive and hear your word that we may abide and do what it is that your word instructs us to do. But we declare we don't just want to be hearers of your word, but we want to be doers of your word. We thank you. We praise you. And again, we ask a special blessing on Dr. Kim McManus. Continue to bless her, God. Continue to uh, reveal yourself, God. Continue to illuminate yourself to her. God, that she, in fact, will be led by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, and it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and say amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but when you know the Holy Spirit has been prayed up, amen, you need to say hallelujah, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. We usher in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. No matter what it is that we're going through, we say hallelujah. It is all good. Hallelujah. It is all well with our soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You let God come in this Friday evening and just say, bless the Lord. No matter what it is you're going through, just say, hallelujah, bless the Lord. And I promise you that the Holy Spirit will show up. He will meet you right where you are. He will meet you in your living room. He will meet you in your car. He will meet you in the barracks. He'll meet you in the hospital room. He'll meet you in the dorm room. For those you at work, he'll meet you in your office. Just open up your mouth and just say hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's here. I don't care where you are. He is truly here in the name of Jesus. He is truly here. Bless the Lord. You need to say hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that if you don't praise his name, the rocks will cry out. And I don't know about you, but I don't need a rock crying out for me. I might be hoarse, but I thank the Lord I still got a piece of a voice. Amen. And so Reverend Hudson, he, he just prayed, Pastor Hudson, he just prayed. He just ushered in the Holy Spirit. But with what voice I have, I don't know about you, but I'm going to say hallelujah. Hallelujah with all that I have. Amen. So I don't care where you are this Friday evening. You need to open up your mouths and just give God the glory and give God the praise. Amen. Just give him the glory and the praise. Amen. Bless the Lord. I just thank God for who he is. I just bless the Lord for who he is. I, I just, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't let it go. I just bless the Lord for who he is. Oh, my God. And I just pray like Pastor Hudson just prayed that somebody today will hear what thus said the Lord and will be delivered. Somebody today will say, Lord, I'm here. I surrender. I'm done with running. Somebody today will want to bless the Lord. Because, again, I don't know about you, but I thank God for the mouth I've given, been, been given. I thank God for the voice that I've been given. Amen. I don't want any rocks crying out for me. And so I just bless the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Hudson, for Ushering in the Holy Spirit, I just bless the Lord for you, my covenant brother. I just thank God for you. And so now there's, there's really not much more for us to do, amen, but to let the woman of God preach. And so I'm going to uh, welcome uh, Reverend Monique Upshade, but she's my bed at the March 2019 Baltimore Annual Conference. God saw fit to bless the Reverend Monique Upshade Davis to receive her second pastoral appointment to Mount Olive Amy Church in Wharton, Maryland. Pastor Mo is humbled and honored to serve the great people of Mount Olive. Reverend Davis served on the Committee on Ministerial Orders and the Finance Committee for the Eastern District of the Amy Church. 
um, as well as served as a treasurer for the Baltimore Conference Women in Ministry. She currently serves on the conference secretarial team for the Baltimore Conference of the Amy Church and the Committee on Ministerial, Ministerial Orders for the Baltimore District. Additionally, she is the lead instructor for the second year class of the Board of Examiners of the Baltimore Conference. Reverend Davis is employed at the Kraft Heinz Company in Dover, Delaware as the Production and Inventory Control Manager. Reverend Davis is married to Clarence Maurice Davis. And out of this blessed union, they have a son, Jalen. Did I say it right? I always say his name, Jalon. Jalen, Jalon. Forgive me, I always, I want to, I always, I pray I say it right. Uh, Emmanuel Maurice Davis. They reside in Smyrna, Delaware. Reverend Davis counts it all a blessing and a privilege, being an humble servant of the Most High God, and keeps her favorite scripture close to her heart, which is 2 Timothy 1 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So after the sermonic selection, the next voice you will hear is that none other of my, my covenant sister, my big sister in the ministry, and that is Reverend Monique Upshur Davis, pastor of Mount Olive in Wharton, Maryland. Amen. And so y'all uh, bear with me. And um, yeah, we bless the Lord for, and um, I'm going to um, share with you our Amen, amen, amen. How's everyone doing tonight? I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm excited about being here, and we know that God sure enough is able. I just want to say I greet you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. I bring you greetings from Mount Olive Amy Church in Wharton, Maryland, to my sister in Christ, the Reverend Dr. Kimberly McManus, to my brother in Christ, Reverend Michael Hudson, to President Elder Cordell Hunter, to Reverend Denise. Denise Jones, Exhorter, Iris Brown, Reverend Marsha Brown, and all clergy assembled to the guests who have come to be with us tonight, to St. John, to the St. John Pocomoke family, and to my Mount Olive family, and to the Gethsemane family. We are just here to bless the mighty name of Jesus. I'm excited about what God is doing. Can we just say we are willing to wait on the Lord and let him move through our life? Are we willing to say, Lord, you are worth waiting for? That song, Bless My Soul, it bless my soul. And I'm just praying, just keep on praying, just keep on praying, because God has a word for us tonight. I am truly humbled about being here to, uh, again, to Reverend Kemp for extending the invitation. Again, it's been, it's been a blessing to be with her on these Pentecost services. And, you know, the, the we had two, two women. This is the, both of them virtual? I know this is number three, but the first one was live and the second, the other two were virtual. My God. So here we are, virtual number three. And we know God is going to do great things tonight. There is a word from the Lord. And I want to thank my brother in Christ for praying a powerful prayer tonight with the power of the Holy Ghost this evening. He just tore down the heavens and surely put us in a place of worship tonight. And we bless God. And so if you will pray, the preacher will come. If you pray, the Lord will continue to do what he needs to do. I need you to pray. So let us pray. Gracious Lord, it is me, oh God, standing in the need of prayer. I can't do this unless you show up and show out. God, I ask you to hide me behind the cross and let your people hear your son, Jesus. God, we need a word tonight, a word that's going to lift, a word that's going to deliver, a word that's going to take us to a place that we feel your power tonight. God, we need it right now. So God, right now, I ask you to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength strength and my redeemer and let the redeemed of the Lord say amen amen and amen and so I loved your theme for tonight stay put until the Holy Spirit comes and I'm going to preach right out of your your theme text tonight which is first Corinthians the 16th chapter verse 8 but I'm going to tag on verse 9 and I'm going to read it from three different versions the NIV version says this but I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work has opened to me and there are many who oppose me. Then the passion translation kicks it like this. Regardless, I will remain in Ephesus until the feast of Pentecost. There's an amazing door of opportunity standing wide open for me to minister here. 
even though there are many who oppose and stand against me. And then lastly, the Good News translation says it like this. I will stay here in Ephesus until the day of Pentecost. There is a real opportunity here for great and worthwhile work, even though there are many opponents. God's word for God's people. Yes, it is almost hard to believe it is about 50 days since Easter because Pentecost marks the 50 days after Easter. It is also known as the Feast of Harvest or the Feast of Weeks that goes with the end of the grain harvest. But more significantly and importantly, Pentecost is remembering and celebrating the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples. Pentecost was an annual celebration then, and it's an annual celebration now. There are some who view Pentecost as to be the birth of the church because the Christian church came to be when the disciples went out as Christ had commanded. The Bible says Jesus commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This divine power is needed when it comes to working for the Lord. We must understand we cannot do effective work unless we have some power that comes from heaven and heaven alone. The Holy Spirit is the divine spiritual power working within us to guide us and to direct us. Dr. Charles Stanley said, after Pentecost, every believer has received the Holy Spirit. If Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, then the Spirit is the sap equipping us for Christian life and the Holy Spirit seals us in Christ. Well, since the Holy Spirit re represents the sap equipping us for Christian life and seals us in Christ, then we need to be sure we respect and adhere to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and yield to the Spirit's divine power. Some of us have some problems with yielding. See, I, I was looking around and asking God, where do you want me to go with this? And then I ran across this online resource ESL Kids with a Z that helps children learn about different topics. One of the study activities they have is called Movers and Shakers, famous African Americans. There are six African Americans mentioned as movers and shakers in the study activity. President Barack Obama, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Frederick Douglass, Oprah Winfrey, Shirley Chisholm, and Harriet Tubman are the six that they mentioned in this activity. All of them who made tremendous contributions to the well-being of all people, not just African Americans, because of their calling, because of their gifts, and influence to make positive change. Well, the term movers and shakers was probably big when I was growing up, and, and especially in the business world. A mover and shaker is a person who has power and influence and who makes great accomplishments. Bill McKibben said, the movers and shakers on our planet aren't the billionaires and generals. They are the incredible numbers of people around the world with love for neighbors and for the earth who are resisting, remaking, restoring, renewing, and revitalizing. Therefore, for the little bit of time that God has allowed, I want us to think on this, the spiritual mover and shaker.
If you would, I just want you to hashtag that out there and, and blow it up on social media, the spiritual mover and shaker. In our text, we find the apostle Paul has made some personal requests. We know Paul. Paul is the one who had a, a transformation on the road to Damascus. It was when he had an encounter with Christ with a beam of light that blinded him to the point that he could not see for three days until he had to go to get his sight restored. But yet there was a calling and a change made on his life. He is the one who wrote this letter to the church of Corinth. He is the one who showed what it means to live a life for Christ, even though he realized he was not worthy. He was one who encountered a spiritual shaker and mover through the Holy Spirit. Paul dealt with the problems in the Corinthian church and to offer solutions and to teach Christ followers how to live in a corrupt society. Don't you know we are living in a society that is corrupt when there is hate, where there is people who don't even want to call us by our true name, who would rather see us hurt, who would rather see us killed, who would rather see us back somewhere doing being subservient to them, but yet we are not made for that. We were made for greatness in the name of Jesus. And so with that, we must stand up for that and deal with the issues of life. We must deal with those who turn around and make us think that we are less than when God calls us to be more than. That's why we need to have a spiritual mover and shaker. When we have a spiritual mover and shaker, we realize that we are not working by ourselves. When we have a spiritual mover and shaker, he is the one who would deal with those things that we don't even know we will just go and things will happen when we have the when we're operating under the guidance of a mover a spiritual mover and shaker has there anybody out there that's been in a tight place is there anybody that's been in a place where you felt that you did not belong where there were people who did not look like you act like you or were, were, were true to you were there people that you encountered that took things for took you for granted because of the gifts that you had. Was there some people that said you don't even amount to something? Was there somebody out there that realized? But let me tell you, when you have a spiritual movement shaker working on your behalf, you don't have to worry about those who talk about you. You don't have to worry about those who put their name on you. You don't have to worry about those who shut the door in your face. You don't have to worry about those who push you aside. You don't have to worry about about when you are operating with a spiritual movement shaker, but there's some things you got to realize which Paul shows us in the text. I love it when the text comes in a place and you have to say, God, show me. And God showed me through the spiritual move and shaker how to see this text and allow it to be something that we can relate to. Well, in this, there are some things that we must do when it comes to being in the presence of the spiritual move and shaker. There's only one spiritual move and shaker, and that is the Holy Spirit. Don't get it twisted. It's not me, a preacher. It's not your pastor. It's not the presiding elder. It's not the bishop. It's not the trustees. It's not all the exhorters. It's not the prayer warriors. It is the living Holy Spirit. It is God himself. He is the spirit spiritual mover and shaker. Sometimes we want to rely on man. Sometimes we want to rely on woman. But let me tell you, man or woman don't can't put you in or out of hell. Man or woman cannot bless you the way the spiritual move, mover and shaker can. That's why we have to be anchored in the word and trust God to do things on our behalf. Well, the spiritual mover and shaker shows us these things in this text because Paul gets to a place where he has written this letter and he says, these are some things I need you to do. Earlier on in this text, he speaks about gathering up and taking collection for people. He says to save up and, and to set your money aside so we can help those in need. He is about being benevolent and helping those. And when we are under the guidance of a spiritual mover and shaker, it will cause us to help those who are in need. We are not about self. We are not about promoting ourselves. We are 
about promoting those who don't have, and we go out and search for them and let them know that we are there for them. This is what Paul was doing with them. But then he goes on. And in the midst of this, he then comes to a place and he comes to Macedonia and he gets there and he tells them, I want to be there with you, but only if God allows. If God does not ordain things for us, how can we be in the presence and allow the spiritual mover and shaker to work on our behalf? We can't do it. Sometimes we try to make things happen and then God trips us up. We try to shift stuff. And God says, that's not the place where I have called you to be. That's not the place where I want you to be. Why are you going down a path that's going to lead to destruction? Why are you going to a place that's going to only bring your heartache? Why are you going to this place? We have to be willing to listen to the spiritual mover and shaker. See, we got to understand the spiritual mover and shaker has all the power to make things happen on our behalf. That's why when Paul put it in here, he says, I want to stay with you, and but I'm not going to stay until Pentecost. Well, we got to understand the Pentecost experience where the disciples got the, the power of the Holy Spirit had already happened. This Paul wasn't there. He was now doing his ministry and some time had passed, some years had passed, but he realized that in this experience, that this is a remembrance of the celebration and the power that he is working with because he realized that he was not worthy. Well, what are these things we got to be, uh, made, uh, be, uh, made, be made aware of? If we're going to be guided by the spiritual mover and shaker, one of the first things we have to do is our flesh must be in complete submission. Uh-oh. Well, what you mean by that? See, the power of the Holy Spirit cannot work in and with an unwilling vessel. We get in trouble when our flesh is stubborn and unwilling. See, unwilling flesh doesn't trust God. We don't want to have a Nabal spirit. If you don't know about Nabal and Abigail, Nabal, which name means fool, he acted like a fool concerning David. We got to understand we cannot have a Nabal spirit. That's what it means when our flesh is not being subjected and under the submission of the Holy Spirit. See, stubborn flesh wants to be in control and not yield. We don't want to have the Jezebel spirit. See, Jezebel was one who did not want to acknowledge the power and the sovereignty of God. Well, we know what happened to her. She got ate up by the dogs. Well, I don't want to be ate up by no dog. Well, that's why we got to allow ourselves to be under the power and submission of the Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Ghost. Help us, spiritual mover and shaker. We want to be formed and moved and be about you. We have to be ready to let go and let God be the author and finisher of our faith. We got to walk the walk. We got to talk the talk. We cannot be half-hearted in our relationship with allowing God to move in us and through us. How many of us remember growing up the saying, a hard head makes a soft behind? That's what it means when we are not in submission and allowing the spiritual mover and shaker to work on our behalf and not yielding and not being in complete submission and yielding to the spirit. That's what happens. We have a hard head and God will sure enough make us have a soft behind. See, the Lord chases those whom he loves. See, we are not, we got to understand, we are not the spiritual mover and shaker. God's spirit is, and we must do as the word declares in Job 22 and 21. It says, submit to God and be at peace with him, and in this way, prosperity will come to you. Let me tell you, when we are in submission, God will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings. We don't have any room to receive, but we must be willing to yield unto the spirit. Savior is the greatest example 
of complete submission when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus Christ submitted him, his complete self to the will of God, where he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. How many of us have gotten to a place where we say, Lord, not your will, not my will, but your will be done. When we get to that place of complete surrender, we have to say, I surrender all, all to you, Lord. We give it unto you and let the spiritual mover and shaker, the Holy Spirit come in. That's why we must do as the word declares, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's why some of us are having problems because we have not yielded. We are wonder why the enemy is on our back. We are wonder why the enemy keeps nipping at our heels. Well, he's nipping at our heels because we have not yielded. God can't fight the battle if we're unwilling to let him fight it for us. We keep having our hands up ready to fight. God said the battle does not belong to you. It belongs to me how can you move you're getting in my way and sometimes god will knock us down in order to get us out of the way so that we can be in a place of submission we can't be in a place of submission if we keep getting out get got our neck stuck out and stuff no submission means to bow down Submission, not, not, it is not just always in a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. When we yield our spirit unto God, our soul and our very being, then God says, now my the spiritual mover and shaker can work some things out on our behalf. This is where we find Paul in the text because he was one who did some nasty stuff in church for against the church if we know our bible we know what what paul did so the first thing we must allow ourselves we must be in complete submission to the move of god the second thing i like this one don't make your move too soon don't make your move too soon. Well, what this means is we need to have patience. We must know how to wait and we must know when to wait. It's one thing to know how to wait, but there's another thing to know when to wait. See, the song said, writer said, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Are there any people out there that says, I don't mind waiting on the Lord? We have to get to that place that we say, Lord, I don't mind waiting for you to move on my behalf. Sometimes we look at waiting as being passive, meaning without active response or resistance. Passive meaning not doing nothing while we wait. However, I challenge that, that way of thinking and suggest for us that waiting is being active. Well, what do you mean? I mean this. The word tells us to wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Well, in our waiting for God to move, we should be seeking God with all our heart. We should be praying unto him. We should be fasting. We should be praying. We should be studying his word. While we're waiting, it's active because when we sit back and be passive, how can we say that we are truly in submission because we're doing nothing in regards to feeding our spiritual selves in order for it to grow and to be connected. Therefore, when the spiritual movement shaker begins to make stuff happen, we are in position and we are ready to move forward in the name of Jesus. Yes. We have we can't make our move too soon. See, Paul did this. He said, I got to wait till Pentecost. He said, I got to wait for the power to happen. 
if we wait for the power. Don't you know sometimes I, that old Kenny Rogers song, you got no one to hold them, no one to fold them, no one to run and no one to walk away. That's what it means. We have to, and when, and when we are in line with the spirit of God and when we are hearing from God, then we know how to wait on the Lord. We know how to win and we know how to wait. We know when to wait. And we know how to wait. And then when God tells us to move, or when the spiritual mover and shaker tells us to move, we move. And when they say you sometimes we just gotta bust the move in the name of Jesus and let nobody hold us back from moving forward. That's why the word should be an encouragement to us in order to understand that waiting is an act thing because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint that's what it means to wait on the Lord keep staying in your word keep praying before him keep laying before him say God what is it that I need to do but Paul knew that there were some things that he needed to do but he said I am I know myself in Christ enough to know that I I need to wait until I get the power. I don't know about you. Tell someone I need to wait till I get the power. Well, see, that's why these are, there are blessings in the waiting. Paul knew that there were blessings in the waiting. That's why I got to go back. He said, but I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost. Stay put. Don't move. Stay in the word. Put, put, put your plate down. Tarry for a little while and let God speak to us. And when he opens the door, be ready to walk through the door. When he opens the windows of heaven and be ready to pour you out a blessing, have your hands open to receive. That's what it means to know how to wait and not make your move too soon. Don't we know that when we make the move too soon, that then we get we miss some of the opportunities we would have had. And sometimes it gets a little rough. Sometimes it gets a little crazier. All because we could not wait. Wait and watch God move. <clears throat> and then the third thing, this is where the shout comes in. Divine opportunities will be made available. My Lord. When we are in the guidance of the spiritual mover and shaker, divine opportunities will present themselves. That means we are in line with what God has called us to. We are in line with what God is going to do on our behalf so we can do a great work in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Paul knew he needed the spiritual mover and shaker. He was the only one that knew he was not worthy of being called an apostle and to the blessings God gave him because, again, because he persecuted the church. We have been the same way when we haven't done what God, God has called us to do. We have been the same way when we didn't go and do the things that we said we were going to do. Some of us have made some promises to God and we have fallen short on those promises. But then when you yield to the spiritual mover and shaker, just as Paul did, he yielded himself. He didn't, <clears throat> after that conversion experience, he followed God with his whole self. And that is what God is calling us to. He yielded and then he took the word of God to the Gentiles, to those who weren't even a part of it. He took it to them. And that's why the word says, because of a great door, this is when a divine opportunity for him had came about. He said, because a great door for effective work has opened to me, and there are many who oppose me. I'm here to tell you, <clears throat> when we start doing the work of the Lord, we're going to encounter some people who's going to oppose us. But guess what? 
We don't have to worry about that because the spiritual mover and shaker is going to make a way out of no way. We don't have to worry because the spiritual mover and shaker will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we have no room to receive. We don't have to worry. All we got to know is when we are in the right place at the right time that was ordained by God and set apart for that, we will make things happen in the name of Jesus because the spiritual mover and shaker who has all the power, the spiritual spiritual movement shaker who can do all things well, the spiritual movement shaker who can do all things except fail, the spiritual mover shaker who will fight every battle that comes our way, the spiritual movement shaker who will navigate every path for us, the spiritual mover shaker who will make the crooked path straight, the spiritual mover shaker who will make us go through and climb over every mountain and through every valley, the spiritual mover shaker who will guide us each and every way, the spiritual mover shaker who will be more for us than the whole world of distance, the spiritual mover shaker who will make all all things possible. The spiritual mover and shaker, as Jesus put it, it will be the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in Jesus Christ's name. He will teach us all things and bring us to remembrance all the things that he has said to us. Jesus has spoken some things to us, and Jesus is going to do some great things to us, but we must allow the spiritual mover and shaker to work it out on our behalf. Are you ready to be guided by the spiritual mover and shaker? Yes. Say, yes, Lord, I'm ready. <clears throat> and when you're ready, come to him and be in complete submission. Learn how to wait on him and watch him open the doors of heaven. Paul did a great work when he wasn't even worthy. Each of us are not even worthy, but thank God that Jesus Christ makes us worthy when he allowed himself to be sinful, to take on all the sin. And with that, we can move forward with grace and with power. On this Pentecost Friday night, allow the spiritual moving shaker the one who has the authority, the one who has all the power. Let him guide us each and every way. And guess what? We will have the blessings that no man, or no woman can either take, they can't give because it all comes from God. May God bless you this evening and allow the spiritual movement shaker to work it out just for you. God bless you and amen. <clears throat> amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Amen, <clears throat> amen, amen. Amen. I'm sorry, uh, Pastor Mo, we were sitting over here. We think that the devil was busy, but uh, but we know that you brought forth a mighty word and we 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 gonna get this right, amen. And so, um, we we were over here trying to go back and forth, but we bless the Lord for you, um, for this evening for the word that God gave you. I, I was trying to <laughs> post it online every that's your three points, amen. And so I just bless the Lord for you. We just thank God for you, amen. And uh, we just bless God for you and your obedience spirit <laughs> and. And for telling us what it is that we needed to do in order to have the Holy Spirit. And in, in so many words, just be still. <laughs> just be still and, and let God do what he got to do. And stop always giving something to God and then taking it right on back. And so we just we just bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for you. Pastor. Get your hands out the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she, she said, like, I was just like, <laughs> oh, Lord. So we just bless the Lord for you. Amen. And so we just we just thank God for everyone. We thank God for this wonderful, wonderful service that we've had. And um, we, we know the devil's been busy online, but in all things, God gets his glory. Amen. And so we just bless the Lord for each of you being here with us um, today. Um, and so right now we just come before you and ask if you do not know the holy spirit if you do not if you've never felt the holy spirit 
uh, if you've never felt the Holy Spirit, amen. Um, Pastor Hudson ushered in the Holy Spirit in prayer, and then Pastor Mo brought it on forth in her in the preach word. And so if you do not know um, Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, then we ask you today to please, please, please find it not robbery. He didn't find it robbery to be with us on a Friday evening, a beautiful Friday evening. But we pray today that you would also invite the invite Jesus Christ into your life. It said, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved from Acts 2.21. Come then, let us confess our sins to the one who is faithful to forgive. Come then, let us adore the one who is mighty to save. Merciful and gracious God, our hearts cry out for you to make us whole again. Even as we celebrate that you have come to dwell within us, we have sinned against you and abandoned your commandments. We have been jealous, possessive, ambivalent, ambivalent and impulsive. We have not heeded your word and we have not cherished your covenant. Help us to glorify in all times and in all places as our souls thirst for your living waters. Quench our needs and satisfy our love that we may come back to you and be sent forth to fill the world with your mercy and grace. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And so then there's the assurance that Jesus assures us when he says in John 20, 19, 23, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they're retained. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we pray today on the Friday before Pentecost Sunday. But if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you would just put right here on Facebook, uh, even if it is coming back to watch this later. I pray that you can hear us. Amen. But we pray that whatever time you watch this, that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, that you will indeed just put us a little comment here and say, what must I do to be saved? We always say, you don't have to tell us your vices. We don't have a heaven or a sin, a heaven or a hell to put you in. Amen. Everybody has some vice that they're still dealing with. I don't care. There are no perfect people. Everybody has some vice that they're dealing with still. And so all we ask is that if, they, if you know that's you, you say, I want to start anew. I want to be able to feel the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit then drop us a line right here on Facebook. And I promise you that one of us will get back to you as soon as possible. Amen. And we will go over the prayer of salvation. We will welcome you into the kingdom. Amen. Because there is work to do for each of us. Please know that all the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul being saved and will rejoice right here on earth. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for having an obedient spirit. Amen. And being willing to yield over to the Holy Spirit and say, what must I do? What must I do? And so we just bless the Lord for you. Amen. And also we just, we just thank God today. We thank God again for our covenant sister and our covenant brother. Uh, we thank God for all of you who are here, who will have um, uh, worship along with us this Friday evening. We thank God also for our presiding elder Cordell Hunter, who has joined us as well. We thank God for each of you. And so we pray that um, you have indeed um, felt the Holy Spirit right where you are. And so if all hearts and minds are clear, now to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, may the Lord remind you for the rest of this week that he has never left you, that he is always with you. So much he wanted you to know that he sent his Holy Spirit to be your comforter. So delight in knowing that Jesus is with you always. Low even until the end of time. Pray this week that God will help you to not be afraid, but to give you the courage and the strength that you need to move forward for the edification of Christ and be a witness to someone else so you can lead that person to Christ. And so church, may he rest, may he abide in you, henceforth and forevermore. And the blessed people of God say amen. Amen. So I just pray that you all had a blessed. Well, I don't know about you, but I enjoyed myself. Amen. 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 Blessed word. Blessed word. Blessed word. A blessed word. I'm going to do a gallery view so everybody can see we here. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and so we just thank God for each of you. 
And again, Pastor Mo, I don't know. Yeah, we see, we we uh, we just thank God for the word that God put in your belly. Amen. Uh, I, we just bless the Lord for you. May God now fill you back up with all that you poured out tonight. Amen. Yeah. And so, well, like I said, the devil's busy online, so we don't even know what's happening online. <laughs> uh, we have yeah. no idea. Um, but we know that um, we, we're going to go back and get it all right. But we know that truly God gave you a word for yes. such a time as this. Amen. That's God. Bless so God. we just bless the Lord for you. Amen. And so y'all have a blessed night in the Lord. Know that God loves you best. He loves you most. Amen. Amen. And he, he ain't nothing you can do about it because he loves you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. So I love y'all with the love of Christ. Love you too, sis. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Yeah.